And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we are going to be taking care of a couple of side projects because right now, well, our magnet transportation is, is going on, but it's going to take a little while. So instead, we're going to come back to this planet that we haven't been to a while and sort out some of the things we should have taken care of a long time ago. And we just severed a power wire, didn't we? Yeah. That's been happening everywhere I go. I'm going to have to send over some more tungsten. We have to keep replacing these wires with tungsten everywhere we go because we keep severing them with our engines. Oops. Anyway, the main goal here is we want to extract all the iron from what we've been collecting over here. There's a whole bunch of iron and we want to send that back to our home planet. Also this gold, we might as well. In fact, there's also a bunch of uranium back here. We want to, this is a, a resource collection mission and maybe a little bit of uh, taking care of the supply teleporter. We'll start dumping this stuff back more automatically in future. Now just give me one minute while I send over some tungsten so we can replace these wires. Though I do think the first thing we're going to do is get our dupes to just replace that with anything they can find lying about the place. Uh, the reason being is it's killing our Radbolt generator. Oh, we have 74 million Radbolts. Well, that will take a while for those to... Wow, it's not degrading. Normally they degrade rapidly once the power is cut. Maybe once you get high enough it just can't... It can't degrade anymore? Or maybe they've changed that. Hmm. All right, uh, let's uh, let's fire over some tungsten. We can replace those with cobalt. That or with tungsten, that should take care of the problem. We've got tungsten coming in from where is it down here? We're sending it from our home planet. Now, what we want to do is just build a little extraction facility here where we can send everything home. In fact, I think we have enough steel. Yeah, I think we'll make a conveyor loader in here out of steel, because a lot of the stuff we're going to be sending back is going to be well, a little hot, more than a little hot. And this here is the end result of all of our labours. Well, okay, all of our labour seems a little bit excessive there. Uh, what we've done is just set up a few storage containers here. And an auto sweeper above them. Actually, that one we don't need. And then what we're going to do is queue up for all of the iron just to be sent back home. We want that iron back home desperately. But we'll go over why in a minute. Uh, we also want to send back enriched uranium. So any enriched uranium that's harvested here. The reason we desperately or so desperately want all of that iron is we ran out of iron on our home planet. Uh, we turned it all into steel and then we've only got about 60 tons of steel left. How much steel is it? Where is it? Yeah, 59.9. We were just under 60 tons of steel but all of our iron had been converted. However, now we're shipping back iron and we've got about another 23 tons of it to go. It's just we had enough refined carbon. We had almost 20 tons of lime. We just had no iron to go with it. It's one of those rare situations where you have oodles of lime and not enough iron to go around or iron ore. Well, that should sort out our iron problems at least for a while. We could have also went out onto the star map and started harvesting things, but nah, we, we, I figured it'd be simpler just to go and uh, grab the stuff that we already tapped into earlier on that uh, iron volcano. Uh, over here, we're filling back up on more magma. There's been a few changes made. We had to send back our, uh, our people with a few things because, well, we needed tungsten wires down here. They melted also. And down here, we're slowly but surely pumping out all this magma. Uh, oh, one thing, we can't use this rocket silo to run the magma rocket. I really wanted to, but you'll notice that there's this neutronium in the way from the Niobium volcano. We would have had to move this down at least three tiles, or wait, one, two, yeah, about three tiles to fit it all in, and I just... I couldn't figure out a way to do it that wasn't going to be an absolute nightmare, so I just said, you know what, we'll use this rocket to do it for now until we get rid of the magma. We're going to leave all of this magma here. That's all going to be left, but I think we're going to drain out all the rest, like all of this, all of this, all of this. We're going to core out this planet so it looks fine on top, but underneath, no, it will be hollow underneath. Back to Medillia, though. Uh, over here, there's a few side pro projects that really desperately need to be taken care of. One, a giant sweep. We want to sweep up this map because, well, it's affecting our performance, having all this junk just lying about the place. As well as that, we're going to want to come down here and fix up all of our, uh, our beta hives. Yeah, we want to extract all the uranium and send that stuff back home. Some of these have got several tons of the stuff, though. Yeah, like there's 900 kilos in there. This one has... Oh, God damn it. Yeah, 1.5 tons. There's several of them here that need desperate... are in desperate need of harvesting. What are you about? Oh, wait, we've already harvested a bunch of them. I queued them all up to, to get done. But all of that also has to be shipped back home to keep fueling our nuclear reactor program. Once all of this is harvested here, though, we're going to have to start harvesting uranium from space to keep our home reactors going. Our home reactors actually have been doing a absolutely stellar job. They have just been chugging along, providing all the power we need for, what, th oh, 1,600 cycles, maybe? This uranium, yes, I am totally sold on it. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm still a big fan of petroleum boiling and all that, but this has just been so easy to use, and all of this beautiful nuclear waste has been suiting us just perfectly. Looking around here, I think the best plan would be demolish the map and take it all and send it back home to our home planet. 
we don't need this stuff here anymore. The only reason we left it last time was we didn't have a large enough crew to take care of the problem. But I was just thinking, first, demolish all this out and take all this uranium ore. And okay, we'll lose half the mass, but we can ship all that uranium ore back home, and then we can feed it to our bees. We'll lose half the mass, but we can keep our uranium nice and close by, and I'm already doing that with the small amount of uh, uranium we have back here. How much have we got? About 415 kilos. And the bees are doing a good job of turning it into new rich uranium at an excellent rate. So I figure, yeah, demolition time. Uh, let's see how much of this map we can remove. After a little bit of elbow grease bear duplicates, they've managed to core out the entire bottom of the map. Well, okay, there's one more layer left to go, but I want them to do a little bit of sweeping now. Uh, we're going to take all of that and dump it over here into these automatic dispensers, which puts it in range of this uh, auto sweeper. And we're sending everything. We, we don't care what it is, it's all going back home. What's in there at the moment? Copper ore, dirt. Uh, all the enriched uranium has actually already gone back. If we head back over here, ooh, game's thinking about it. There's about 10 tons of, of uh, uranium ore right there. Uh, where is it? God. There we go, 10.2 tons of uranium ore. These bees will convert it at about 90% efficiency. So it's about nine more tons of uh, uranium we're going to end up with. We've got 180 kilos in there, 297, 369, 274. Yep, loads and loads of uranium going forward. And how's our rich uranium supply looking? 37, 37 tons. Okay, just let's just round it up to 40. That would mean we have enough uranium to keep our two reactors running for about 2,000 cycles. Yeah... We're only 2009 cycles into the game already, so it's not like we're going to run out anytime soon. That gives us plenty of time to harvest the star map. All right, but uh, give me another few minutes here. I just want to just tidy up a little bit more of Medillia. Also, I want to core out this, was it, this rust. I don't think we need a rust melter. The game's already slow enough, but uh, we can t convert that rust into oxygen and chlorine and iron. We'll get a bunch of iron out of that if we do it that way. As our dupes run around tidying everything up, I thought we'd uh, streamline things a bit. We basically wiped out all the beehives. We don't need them here anymore, and at the same time, they're just taking up frames that we can't afford. And that gives us easy access down here. Oh, you know what? Give us a ladder segment as well there, or uh, we'll extend that on just a little bit so we can finish the cleanup. But there's a few other things that need to be done if we want to maybe help ourselves out, because the game is definitely chugging. Maybe because... Oh, wait, no. Watato was actually doing pretty good. That water level has dropped dramatically. Something to be said, Aku is, dr is drinking his fill. We're up to 14 million calories of bristleberry here. Good job. And how are we looking here? Everything is clean and sterile and everything is deep frozen. Perfect. No issues whatsoever. All right, but next up, what was it? Ah, yes, our home planet. Our home planet has, well, I've been sort of collecting these critters here. I've been shuffling all the eggs into the section and I'm thinking... I think we just get rid of them. We've no real need for any of these. Some of them, of course, will fight back, but that's okay. We've uh, made sure that no one can actually step onto the platform and all of the shooting will have to be done from the ladder segments above or the canopy below. That way, they should be able to remain safe while doing what they gotta do. Yeah, this does not feel very fair, though this will probably take a little time to get them all. We have dramatically cut down on our animal population here. It's gone from about 110 or so down to, well, 20. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. However, there are some other things we need to take care of. Uh, like, Matilius over here. Yeah, some of the fish are now lagging out and staying up there for very long times. Like, these fish are, are full-grown adults. They've somehow managed to stay up there for lots and lots of cycles. I think the game is not liking the sheer quantity of fish here. We're up to... 430, and I think it's time we shut this sucker down. Um, I don't really see a way around it. There's just too many. Hmm. You know what? We'll, we'll just stop breeding. We'll turn off the breeding, and then whatever fish are in here, we'll just leave them and be done with it. All right, I'll set the sensor to zero. I think that should stop them from ever setting anything in there again, but who cares? Uh, over here, we had a few worries. Uh, namely, this guy almost starved to death because of uh, a mess up. We ran out of oxygen. We ran out of sand first, which meant we weren't filtering the polluted oxygen, but we fixed that by sending over sand via the uh, the targeting beacon. But then they ran out of oxygen because we'd actually let our oxygen supplies go too low while the sand was gone. We didn't notice for so long. So then what we had to do was we had to send over oxalite so that we could pump in uh, oxygen into the system so that we could boost it up again, which is fine. 
it's uh, it's now working reasonably well. We've got about a ton of oxygen in storage. We might have to send them over some more oxalate, and it was a bit of a mess and things get put in the long finger, but this place is fairly sorted. But our next goal, we want to go back and tame these tungsten volcanoes. We want ourselves a whole bunch of tungsten, and these things seem like, well, it's not that we want ourselves a whole bunch of tungsten, it's more, this place here, we're still working on it. There's been, how many rockets back and forth, actually? You know what? Let, let, let's just check how much magma we've brought back from this place. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six full containers. That means there's been three full round trips, and there's another rocket coming back now, which means we'll fill these next two as well. Uh, we're going to need a lot more storage for this magma, and then we're going to have to figure out how to dump it into our magma biome, and it, it's... Yeah, we'll worry about that in a minute. Modilia over here is almost finished. We're just going to do one final bit of sweeping up here and then we'll leave it. I would like to take out the rest of it, but we don't have time. There is another project that immediately needs uh, our attention, so we're going to have to return both rockets with our eight-person construction crew and get to work on our water tank. Yep, our water tank is, is full. Again. Ah, <sighs> every damn time. All right, so... The problem is i got to take care of all this pet mess of piping. Look at this. I've got to do some cleaning up. I really don't want to. We're going to basically fill this entire area in here with water. That'll give us a nice big expansion to our storage space. Eventually, we can just flood the whole map. How do I explain how much of a mess this is? Um, this was put together a long, long time ago. Uh, let's maybe start with... Yeah, we're getting rid of all of these gas piping. I don't care if it's a vacuum anymore. I, I don't think you're really bothered at this point. Considering the size it is, it's just going to take up most of the map. So vacuuming it is kind of pointless. Well, now it is anyway. Okay, over here, what is going on? Well, this is actually pretty straightforward. These things are drop-offs for salt water, clean water, basically all the water we don't want around the map that we want swept up. So you've got your brine, your polluted water, your salt water, and your regular water. They all end up getting dumped down into this section here where these liquid pumps suck it up. And then if it's clean water, well, it all gets filtered and the clean water all goes out this direction or, wait, also this direction? Yeah, one of these two pipes. And those pipes lead up to the top of the tank where they're dropped into the clean water side, right over here. So that's where all the clean water goes. If it's not clean water, then it gets sent out oh, this side, which gets dumped down with either the polluted water or the salt water or any of others and basically goes down here into our uh, water filtration facilities where everything gets uh, boiled. Yeah, we're running out of heat as well, by the way. That's not so bad. Our temperatures in there are still good. We're still hitting 180, but we're definitely going to need to inject some more heat in there. Good thing we've got some magma lying about. However, there's some extra wonderful things going on here that just makes this so much more fun. Actually, what is that doing there? No, no what? Never mind. Say so this liquid pump over here, which seems to be doing nothing. No, that's not doing nothing. Next, use the pan and zoom. I'm going to keep my cursor here, and we're going to just scroll all the way up to the top of the map. There is actually a clean line going all the way up to here and hooked up to these two pumps. So what happens is we're sending water from other planets here and that water comes over here and it gets filtered out. Well, it gets sent into these things. If it's clean water, it gets filtered out and sent to the right into the clean water tank. If it's resin, isoresin is also getting sent here, that gets sent over to this uh, pumping station. And if it's not wa clean water and it's not resin, then it's either salt water or polluted water. And both of those get dropped down here. It was just easier to drop them than it was to pump them all the way down. So that just drops all the way down here, gets picked up by this pump, and pumped across. Yeah, like like I said, this was pretty sloppy. And that just gets sent across here and filtered in with the rest of the gunk. Yeah, that's, um, now we've got to move all of that up. Uh, by that I mean, what I want to do is expand the water tank up to about here. So say over to there and down. We'll just turn this entire area in here into a water tank, which means everything in here has got to go. The plants, everything, and all of these liquid pumps and everything have to move. As well as that, these pumps down here, they're uh, beside these containers, which store ice. Yeah, we put ice and things like that in there, and eventually the ice melts, and the, uh, the ice floats across here and gets picked up by the pumps. It was, yeah, a very simple way of sorting out all of our water. I didn't realize how out of control it was going to get, or I probably would have invested maybe a little bit more time in making it more expandable. But, you know, you live and you learn. All right, give me a few minutes to clean this up. The plan here is to simplify this whole thing drastically. Down here we have this, well, this awfully complicated filtration system. And this was back when we had lots of clean water and lots of different types of water lying around the map. Right now, the only waters we have to worry about are the ones that get printed out of the portal. That's it. So I'm not worried about filtering out the clean water. We're only going to have maybe a few hundred kilos of that ever show up at a time. So pretty much all of these can just go. Uh, 
Yeah, get rid of a lot of them. We don't really have to worry about those causing any uh, complications. And then all we'll do is, at the top here, we'll just have a new drop off. Any clean, dirty, polluted water, all that stuff gets dumped down here, and these two liquid pumps will start just feeding them into the system. One will come over here, there's already a blob in there already. This is a polluted water feed from the other planet, and this is the salt water feed from uh, somewhere else, who knows. Whatever, they'll all get dumped in there. Uh, we're going to seal this up on the sides, and we're going to use this for ice storage. Any ice that comes out of the portal or any we get from other planets gets dumped in here. And, yeah, same again. That should hopefully take care of all of that, though. There's still, oh my god, there's so much piping that needs to be taken care of. And I need to put up a bridge right there so they can access that section. But down here, yeah, I'm going to need to do some stripping out. Some of this was created so that we could push the water through this area. The reason being, some of this water comes in very cold. Uh, for example, this is polluted water coming in at, what, minus... Oh, some of it's hot, some of it's cold, I don't know. Some of it will be like minus whatever from the other planet. We send it through here, which is, well, quite toasty. This warms it up so it takes less heat to boil it after it gets into our little desalination project down here. Just a, a simple way to recycle some of the energy so we're not going through the magma quite as quickly as we should be. Well, yeah, we're going through there pretty rapidly, to be honest. Uh, let me see if I can clean up this piping just a tiny bit more. Would you look at that? It's almost pristine. Okay, not quite pristine, it's still a little bit messy, but uh, this is uh, salt water coming from a saltwater geyser nearby, this is salt water coming from another planet, this is polluted water coming from another planet, and this here is going to be, oh wait, we're going to move this section over here to this pipe, which is going to come all the way from up here. Yeah, then we can finally open up this section and let the water flow in. Well, I still have to seal off a few pieces here, but we'll, we'll leave that till the last minute. I'm using some triple layering everywhere because once you have three tiles tiles thick of anything, water can't force its way through. Uh, actually, there is some clean water down here, but I think I'm just going to leave it. Uh, we're going to be flooding the place anyway, so what's the point? In fact, we'll get rid of all of those. We're going to have to do a whole major cleanup down here just to get rid of all the gunk that's lying about the place. Oh, and that pipe going through here, that's actually an output from our water tank going to an oil well. Yeah, there's just loads of outputs everywhere. This whole system is completely ridiculous, namely because of just trying to put together a water tank this size. It was a, a silly idea to begin with. All right, but we're not finished. We're, we're going to make a proper size water tank. I figure if we get to at least 40 to 60% of the map covered in water, it'll be a win. While we wait for a few things to be done here, we're still waiting to just sweep this up. Once the sweep up is done, I think we seal her up and we can crack open the tank. However, time to launch the magma rocket again. And there was a wonderful suggestion that I was given a while back. And I just thought I'd show you the implementation. We've, the tank is full. So the liquid is backed up in the pipe. And because the liquid is backed up in the pipe, we're going to turn off the liquid pump. And there we go. Now, did, did that turn off? God damn it. <laughs> yes, it's off. It's off. It's just the game's taking a second to figure it out. All right, so, but there's still this trail of magma going up. And this is going to stay in the pipes. Now, this is normally not too big a deal. We've heated up the pipes quite a bit at this point. They're up to 15... Wow, those pipes are incredibly hot. But some of these pipe segments are not too good. And as well as that, it was cracking the pipes. It was one of the reasons we had uh, an atmos suit in here. Is so that Odin could hop out of the rocket and repair any broken rockets or, well, broken tungsten type things. There was a, Or broken power cables. But now what we've done is, on the suggestion from the comments, we left a ton of space in the rocket. Literally one ton. And with that extra ton, once we crank the space right back up again, it basically soaks up the last of the magma that's in the piping. So all of that magma that was going to just be stuck there in the piping and cause issues is now soaked up by the rocket. It goes into storage and once it's all, once the uh, pipes are clear, we then launch the rocket. Just saves us leaving a bunch of magma behind. With the last of all of that loaded into the rocket, we can fire it back home. And I've even selected to go to the magma drop-off. Drop you don't want it going to the wrong section. Uh, acknowledge warnings, cargo transfer complete. Actually, oh, it needs to be full before it can launch it. Okay. You know what? That's fine. We'll acknowledge the warnings and begin the launch sequence. All right, that'll head back to base. And as well as that, they've changed it now. It actually takes fuel to launch and land the rocket. Uh, let's check the power overlay. Yeah, we're good. And off we go. Oh, we did lose the solar panel in the process here. You know what? It worked out. We still had plenty of power. Down here, this is how much magma we've got left in the section. Soon we're going to have to send over the team to, uh, well, start dealing with this side of the magma. But that, that can wait. Liquid tank needs to be expanded. The liquid tank must grow. We have finished. Well, just about. I think we've got triple layered on this side, only double layered across the top because I think we'll be okay for pressure there. I'm gonna put in some airflow tiles later, but I think we're going to start this off here. Let's use buildings in case I've got pipes behind there. I, I know I have pipes behind there somewhere. And you know, let's take everything from there down. All, right, all of that should go. And then what that should do is this water should flood in 
and force its way across. We're slowly going to chip these away, but what will happen is these gases that are in here, they're all going to get forced up and gradually what will happen is the liquids will push all the way across here and keep pushing and pushing and pushing and eventually there'll only be a little bit of gas left in here and once that's all forced out, this hydro sensor, where is it? Yep, come on. That hydro sensor is going to detect when there's water there and close the door. Done. Now, our dupes can still get in and out of here because we have this little double liquid lock here. So it's uh, they've still got a reasonably short way in here. But uh, give me a minute here to put in some ladder segments and stuff so they can get in and out maybe a little bit more easily. And uh, yeah, then we'll then we'll time lapse this sucker a bit. There we go. I've also sealed this in here with insulated tile so there shouldn't be any gases able to get into that section. And let's check on gas overlay. Yeah, now gases did get into this, unfortunately, but there was nothing really we could do about that. I have sealed it at the top. It's not a huge deal, but if we can keep the gases out, why not? Now, uh, this is going to take a while. We do have an awful, awful, awful lot of water pressure up there. <laughs> Go the size of that water tank. Sometimes I just forget how stupidly oversized it is. That should slowly f push down in there and fill this whole section. We'll keep chopping this off as we go it's just I don't want to remove too much otherwise I'll end up with air gaps and gases will flow in there and I'd rather avoid that if we could you know what this is taking too long <laughs> and I think we just let in a bunch of gas over there, there yeah that gas can you know what well this is taking far too long hell no I don't care if a bit of gas gets in if it's going to take I mean if it's a little bit of gas gets in, fine. But having to sit there for ages while it goes through, hell no. We're going to speed this sucker along. This water tank is made for using, not for just sitting around watching it slowly rise. While we're waiting for them to dismantle this section, I should probably have a quick check, check up on our magma rocket. How are we doing? Yeah, we're pumping out 40 kilos per second of magma, which, you know, it's a reasonable amount. Though the power costs on running one of these, Jesus. They're about 240 watts for each one of them, so it's 240 watts out, 240 watts in. So we're using about 2 kilowatts of power to run this whole thing. But it's worth it. Look at all those sweaty canisters of magma. That is just so much. What are we up to? Yeah, I'm going to need to build more of these, aren't I? These can only be built out of steel as well. It's going to take a lot of steel to store all the magma from that planet. Anyway, let's see how our water goes. This water is having a hard time pushing in. I mean, slow and steady, I suppose, wins the race, but still. Gas pressure in here has got to about four kilos because it's pushing all the gases together. And over here, it's trying to escape desperately out here, which is up to about 2.3. It's not too bad. It's only got a two-tile gap to escape through. But I think this is working out okay. In fact, I'm going to go grab a cup of tea and hope nothing horrible goes wrong. At the same time, our uh, our magma rocket is back on Tostibo and yeah, we're going to have to send someone over there to uh, collect more magma. Now, there was a suggestion to move this up one tile and say open up these two tiles beneath it. But uh, if you do that, it doesn't actually work. The magma will come in, but it won't actually poke up just because of how viscous magma is. Same way here. Like, this is coming down, it's going under that tile, but it's not poking up into the liquid pump. Otherwise, it'd be damaging it. So we can't do it that way. Not unless you pressurize it an awful lot. It would take door pumps and... I mean, it could probably be done, but it's just faster to send over a bunch of dupes. Get some uh, pitcher pumps and move it all over the other side. In fact, what we could do is just dig a hole here and drop all of this magma down. We just doop, all down here, and then we could just keep pumping from that. Though I think there might be a little bit too much there to release it just yet. Or maybe... Hmm. Okay, I'll think about that. But for the time being, yes. Let's uh let's let the water flow. This is taking an incredible amount of time. I think I let it run there for about 20 minutes and it's still not even close to done. It's going to take a while before that f slides over. Though you can see the water level has dropped substantially. We were way up there. So, yeah, there's still a fair bit more to go on that. We might actually get it down nearly all the way. But that gives us plenty of a space to expand our water tank. Though we are going to need to uh, inject a whole bunch more magma to make sure that we don't run out of uh, filtration. Why are we collecting this much water? Nope, nope, just nope. There's, there's no correct answer to that question. There's no reason for this. However, they do have, seem to have made a few changes in the most recent patch. One, you, can, you can't make infinite-sized rockets out of storage containers anymore. It seems to be limited to the size of the rocket. So, 
Yeah, we can only put in six of these in a row, but that's fine. We got ten on the first one, we'll put in another six over here. That should give us plenty more storage for the magma. Now once that's finished building, we're going to have to send our construction crew, our squad of eight, out to the magma planet again. Magma planet needs more work, namely to move all of that magma around, but I just don't have time. It takes forever to get anything done at this stage. Oh, oh, we've almost run out of magma here. Yeah, we definitely need to send over the crew. We're going to start moving this, migrating this over, and we might even put in a second well, magma pump in here so that we can double the speed of extraction. Otherwise, it's going to take too long. Now, ooh, and this. Yeah, this is going to be the final piece, I think, on this playthrough. This thing emits 316.8 kilos of niobium a second. 316 kilos. That's ridiculous. It's about 22, 22 tons, I think I worked out as. In 70 seconds is what you'll get. So 22 tons of liquid metal in 70 seconds, and you have to deal with that. That's going to be... um. Entertaining, let's just say. Well, hopefully. Anyway, I am going to cut that out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed our water tank expansion and uh, good luck.